Come this morning, Lord, to worship you, God. Father, we just open our hearts this morning, Lord. We just open our hearts this morning, O oh God. Oh, to adore and to worship you, O oh God. Let us lay our burden, O oh God. Let us lay everything, O oh God, at the feet of Jesus this morning and worship the King of Kings. Let the King of Kings and the King of Glory come and dwell among us this morning, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do I could search for all eternity, Lord And find there is none like you There is none like you There is none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you Your mercy Your mercy flows like the river Surrender our life to you, hallelujah.
beautiful May our day be sweet Happy Mother's Day May you have a happy day A sweet one to enjoy Happy Mother's Day to you Happy Mother's Day to you Happy Mother's Day to you Happy Mother's Day Yes, the goodness of God is upon every one of us here as well as those who are listening to online. Especially today is Mother's Day. We would like to get all the mother to stand. Grandmother, Godmother, please stand. Let's give them a hand. What would this world be without mother? There will be no people. It is the mother that gives forth to individual. Amen? And they care for individual as well as each and every one in their family and most of all you know collectively they also become the mother to the people around them in many ways okay praise god you are deeply loved greatly blessed and highly favored together with the mother let's stand let's declare over ourselves i am deeply loved greatly blessed and highly favored look at somebody and say you are deeply loved greatly blessed and highly favored Together we said, we are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Three things very important. Love God, love people, love life. And three more things we need to confess over ourselves. In fact, you need to do it every day. In the morning, in the afternoon, at night. I tell you, it will change you and transform you. I started off being a very timid person. That was many years ago. But... Over the years, this has impacted me. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. I whisper it quietly to myself. I declare it out loud in front of the mirror. In the absence of people, I declare. And when I'm driving, I speak aloud this. So that this confession will bring forth that transformation. And it did. Hallelujah. Because life and death is in the tongue, you know? And so when you confess it, you confess life, it keeps impacting you, impacting you, impacting you. Hallelujah. And soon you will discover that you are changed, you are transformed. I must change, I can change, I will change. Amen? We must change, we can change, we will change. Hallelujah. Let's do it together. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Today is Mother's Day. There's a video clip being prepared and would like to share with every single one. Motherhood plays an important role in the Bible. It binds the beginning and the end. These stories offer us a glimpse into the heart of God. And so we start at the beginning. Taken from the side of Adam, gifted with bringing forth life, the first woman was named Eve because she was the mother of all living. But she was also a mother in her own right, the first of many mothers to come. Though Sarah's womb was closed, God promised nations and kings would come from her. Ten years pass and motherhood seems as impossible as the day it was promised. But the Lord is faithful to keep his promises, and Sarah bore a son who made her laugh. Leah was the firstborn, overlooked by her husband Jacob, who gave his heart to her younger sister. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Despite Jacob's disdain, she found her motherhood in the Lord. When Pharaoh became angry at the fruitfulness of the Hebrews, Jochebed sacrificed her motherhood for the sake of her son. When Pharaoh's daughter saw the child, she had compassion on him. Because of Jochebed's sacrificial motherhood, the Israelites found freedom. 
Naomi was a mother who experienced the loss of her sons. Yet she gained a daughter in Ruth who declared, For where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Naomi and Ruth became family by faith. Mary, a virgin and not yet married, was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The motherhood of this blessed woman was more than the continuation of a family name, but a means for God to bring a savior into the world to save his people from their sins. From the garden to the cross, there have always been mothers. These women paved the way for all women, representing the full spectrum of the ways one could be called mom. Whether a mother in faith, mentorship, adoption, or by birth, you play an important role in the stories of generations to come. To all the Sarahs, Leahs, Jochebeds, and Naomis, Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. I believe God has got a word for every single one. Let's turn to the book of Ruth, chapter 4. Thank you, worship team. Ruth, chapter 4. You know, when I started by preaching from Ruth, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, I never, ever thought about that God has got a word finally, and it ended up on a Mother's Day. And so, as I begin to share with you, I think you can sense the leading of God. His hand is upon the entire congregation, whether it is sisters or brothers, whether it is junior or senior, especially from the book of chapter 4. Surprise, isn't it? What has chapter 4 to offer Ruth? Okay, we're going to start with verse 1. Now Boaz went up to the gate and sat down there. And behold, the close relatives from Boaz had spoken, came by. So Boaz said, come aside, friend, sit down here. So he came aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. Then he said to the close relatives, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, saw the piece of land which belongs to our brother Eli Melech. And I thought to inform you, saying, buy it back in the presence of the inhabitants and the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is no one but you to redeem it. I am next after you. Father, we thank you for the word. Yes, throughout the book of Ruth, Lord, you reveal yourself as you care for your chosen people. And we are your chosen people in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the plan of redemption, how you redeem us from the pit of hell and from the authority of the enemy and transform us into a new creation. And Lord, you want to load us with your benefits so that daily we can magnify and glorify your name. So we commit this message, Lord, Mother's Day message to your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. We just read Ruth chapter 4 verse 1, and all the way to verse 4. Verse 4 concluded by saying, I will redeem it. And you can see that the word redeem keep popping up, keep popping up, keep popping up at least about three to four times, even within four verses. Now, I would like to zero in one person. Can I have the picture of Naomi? Right, just leave it there. The life of Naomi it's been very eventful. But let's talk about her name first, Naomi. What does that mean? The name Naomi simply means this, sweetness and pleasant, gentle. Simple as that. I think when she was young, she must be quite a pretty girl. You know, sweetness and pleasant. It's just like the girl next door, maybe your daughters, very sweet and very gentle. Maybe your niece, very sweet and very gentle. At the age of seven, at the age of 17, you know, and they look so beautiful, so sweet, you know. And as far as life is concerned ahead, there's so much to expect, you know. 
that finish college, finish university, and then get a good job and then settle in. You never know that the company that she worked for will send her to New Zealand or America or even Canada or London. So much to think about, you know, all the wonderful things. Naomi started off with her name called Sweetness and Gentle. But little did she realize that life is an adventure. Life is a disaster without God. But life is an adventure as far as God is in the picture and God's in control. So she probably married at age of, during the biblical time, people got married around 17, 18, 19. Imagine she was so-called like a rose, you know, blooming, so beautiful. So she married a good man. And that good man, his name is Ali Melek. One, the name is gentle and pleasant. The other one is God is my king, God is my judge, Ali Melek. What a better way to begin life together. So here we have Naomi started off with so much to expect. Then the boys came along. There were two boys, Malon and Kilon. Then something happened, not just to them, but to everyone, the place where they stay. It's called Bethlehem. And it experienced famine. The house of bread supposed to provide so much, you know, food provision, but ended up it become what? A place of famine. And that must have dampened her a little. That must have, in a way, helped her to wake up to the reality of life is not just marrying to the right person, but at the same time, life has got its twists and turns in situations that you and I, we cannot control. Some of us, we marry, and we were very happy, and next thing that happened was your spouse got chronic illness and terminal illness and just passed away. Or maybe you got married and, you know, starry eyes as well as the groom is broad shoulder, well brought up. Next moment, there was a car accident. One of them passed away. That's life. That's life. And so Naomi started off with, you know, dove's eyes as well as like a young rose. And then she married Elimelech. And then there was so much that she can depend on as far as Elimelech. But... Life is as such that, you know, it's beyond the control of both of them. So they took their sons all the way to Moab. That's where they hoped to start anew. It was there. Naomi never expected. From being a young lady, her name is called Pleasant and Gentle, and then got married to Boaz. And imagine, has got two boys. She gave birth to two boys. Each child when was born, there must be so much excitement and expectation and everybody will probably hang around her and Ali Melek and say that God has blessed you, you are so fruitful, you know. Do you remember the story of Hannah? She couldn't give birth for many, 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 many years and she has to beg God for it and her pastor mistaken her thinking that she was intoxicated by wine and standing before you know, the presence of the Lord in the temple begin to pray and her pastor was saying, that, come on, stop praying. God will not listen to, you know, you are drunkard, to that effect. And she was so affected, but at the same time, she was so determined. And she told the Lord, if you were to give me a son, take away my shame of barrenness, then this son shall be dedicated to serve you. God heard her prayer. Repeatedly after she prayed for a long time. And the son was offered back to God, Samuel and became prophet Samuel. So barrenness was something to be shunned. Barrenness was something that, you know, at all costs, all the ladies, you know, they just got married. They hoped that they will not end up in barrenness. Even this uh, Zechariah's wife in the New Testament, let's move back to Naomi. From a sweet teenager, become a mother. There's so much to expect, you know, to look after the two boys, the boys who grow up and then famine hit. They moved to Moab. They have to uproot themselves. There are times things happen to us and we have to uproot ourselves and move on. It's as though like God has abandoned them. But did God abandon them? Of course not in the end. But that's not the first trouble she was experiencing. Next thing was her husband passed away. You know, 
So from a beautiful young girl, young wife, she became a mother. Many people admire. And the next thing was she ended up to become a widow, having two boys. But she was faithful. The scripture didn't tell us much. But she was faithful to ensure, to making sure that the two boys, they are married. You know, they don't remain as bachelor. So even without her husband, she makes sure that the two boys are married, settle down and all that. And probably she thought that she has already got over a very big hurdle. It will be a lifelong pain, losing of the husband, her husband, Ali Malek. But little did she know that that is just the beginning. Never expected. So you can see that the little rose that bloomed, and suddenly she has to weather the storm, you know, famine, the death of her husband, which is a big blow. And now, suddenly the Bible said, the two sons also passed away. So it was one blow after another. But at the time when we look at Naomi, she was in her old age and she looks like that. No longer as a sweet young thing. You know what I'm talking about? But in all this, something about Naomi, each step of the way, she chose to keep doing the right thing. You know, she will not deviate and move away from what she has been taught. She was steadfast as far as her confession and her action is concerned. So from a lady, her name is called Pleasant Gentle. Then she moved into the gear of being a wife and then being a mother of two and then ended up losing her husband. So sad, isn't it? Uh, losing her husband after that, she lost two sons. Now she became a mother-in-law. There must be a layer and layer of disappointment, layer and layer of anguish and depressions, layer and layer, you know, being added. And eventually, from a bubbly, sweet young thing, she probably end up become someone sober, quiet, and maybe depressed. But not Naomi. Because she would not allow all this to get a hold of her, you know, and push her down. Rather, she's quite a logical person. Now that she's old, she is a mother-in-law. What kind of a mother-in-law was she? She was a wonderful girl. She was a wonderful mother, raised up two boys. And uh, she was a wonderful wife. Something about her that is very, uh, it's kind of like, make me smile, you know. She knows how to play her role well as far as being a wife is concerned. I would like you to look at Ruth 3, 3. Can I have that verse? Ruth chapter 3, verse 3. Okay. Her advice as somebody's wife now to the daughter-in-law supposed to looking for a husband. She was looking for a husband for Ruth and her advice is therefore wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. Do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Now, I want you to focus on the part that wash yourself and anoint yourself and put in your best garment. Ladies, men, they are attracted by what they see. So, as a wife, as we are celebrating Mother's Day, don't say, I already passed the age of dressing myself nicely. No, if you are married to someone, you are a mother, you are also a wife, see to it that you are always at your best. Not necessarily the most expensive. At least you wash yourself. Here it gives the idea that you tidy up yourself, you bundle up your hair, whatever. Not only that, you put some perfume or you put some cologne, make sure that you smell nice. Okay, then you dress nicely. When your husband is coming back from work, make sure that she doesn't see you in pajamas. Huh? At least you dress up nicely. Because men, basically, we are attracted by what we see. So don't undermine that if you are a wife of one year, 10 years, 20 years. Still do this. Take the advice of Naomi that she gave to Ruth because she's trying to help Ruth to get the advantage of getting the attention of Boaz. Now, as far as man is concerned, why is it Boaz is attracted to Ruth? What makes Ruth so attractive? 
Men look and attracted by what they see. The woman is attracted by substance. For one year, Ruth interacted with Boaz during the two harvests. So she got to see that he's a sensible man, and then he has got substance, and then he has got value, he has got principle. It's not so much of look. A woman is not looking for so much of, you know, the sight, the sound, but more for substance. So I pray that you will take the cue from this book of Ruth, that as a wife, carry on to make sure that, you know, the way you conduct yourself in terms of how you look like and all that, it's very important. Even if your husband is 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, uh, psychologically, men, they are wired in such a way that they are attracted. The first thing is love as first sight. So carry on to help them to get in love with you, your husband, I mean, not any other man. You dress up nicely, you wash yourself, and you put on the best garment. And for the man, may you continue to attract the attentions of your wife by delivering substance. You know, the value of the world will always change. But the value, the godly value that is found, for example, in Psalm chapter 1 will never change. It will carry you from a teenager to become a young man, to become a matured adult, and eventually become a senior man. Because that substance, the word of God, the principle, the value that is taught, will increase your stature. You want to become more matured? Get into the word of God, Psalm chapter 1, and many other portions of scripture as well. And so we see here that from a little girl, when she was born, and her name was called Naomi, and everybody said, oh, you are so pleasant, you are so gentle. She goes through struggles of life, up and down and all that. But she always chose the right path. Not only she follow God, but she has got lots of practical advice. And even for every one of us today, for Mother's Day, for all the mothers, whether you're a stepmother, whether you're a, a natural mother, whether you're a grandmother, or whether you adopted somebody. But there's so much that we can learn from. Okay, so let's move on. Now that two sons died, leaving her with two daughters-in-law, from a conversation, whatever that comes up from the mouth, and she's going through adversity. Many of us, when we go through adversity, we always doubt the love of God, the faithfulness of God. And at the same time, you know, we begin to confess and say things that contradict to the promises of God. God says, I will remain faithful, but we will say something else and question God. To the point the devil put negative thoughts in us and we echoing them by accusing God. The devil is always the accuser of the brother, but you're not careful with the negative thoughts. When we participated, we say it, it becomes like, it's so natural, it's part of me, ma. that's how I interpret what's going on. So where is God? Ah? So if you're in Naomi case, what would you say? You lost the two sons, you lost your husband, you know, then you have to go through famine, and this is all not part and parcel of what you wanted in life, isn't it? Who would want to go through all that? But she's a logical person. Let's look at how logical she is, okay? As a mother in law. Ruth chapter 1 verse 11 to verse 14. But Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go on with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husband? Turn back my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If should I say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight, should also bear sons. Would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husband? No, my daughters. For it grieves me very much for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. She's very practical. You, are, you two are so young. In your 20s, you have got passion. Just like men, they have got passion. You know, and this passion can be very powerful. And you have got this drive in you that you want to be loved. You want to be embraced. You want to be protected. You want somebody that you can lean on, you know, and go through life together. You are still young. You are not ready for singlehood nor widowhood. Why don't you just go back to your mother's place? And then your parents will arrange another marriage for you. Now, that's how logical she is. In Penang, there's a lot of this scenario. 
repeated over and over and over again. What's that? We see elderly lady, you know? Not everyone, of course, but I, I come to know. And then when I get to know them better, they say, don't worry about my daughter. Now she's 50, 60 years old, she'll look after me. When I die, I will wield all my possessions to her, whether it's a house or money or jewelry. I mean, these are the story, you know? So I have no worry about my daughter uh, when I die. Who will look after her? That's nothing bad. That's nothing wrong. But not the thinker of Naomi. She thought beyond that, you know, that your life is more important. So I've heard the story of how parents leave behind tons of assets. And after that, they die. Then they expect this so-called the youngest daughter or the adopted daughter to remain single and to look after them. But Naomi seems to be so different. So she's a very outstanding mother-in-law in spite of adversity. So I would like to speak to all the mother-in-law in our midst that would you consider the wisdom of this uh, Naomi? You know, when you come across situations, Naomi, think ahead and think for the good of the daughter-in-law. She put herself second, her daughter-in-law first. Can I have Ruth chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 2? Then Naomi, her daughter-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security? It's already chapter 3, yeah? Chapter 1, she said the same thing to Ruth and Opa. She showed them concern. Go. Please go. Leave me. Okay, I will be looked after. Somehow, don't worry. Go. So Opa left, one of the daughters-in-law, leaving behind Ruth. Ruth was with her, chapter 1, chapter 2. Correct? And she worked very hard to serve Naomi by gleaning from the field of those, you know, uh, so happened to be Boaz, those owner, those who own the field. But this is what she said. That means it has been in her mind as a mother-in-law, I want to do something for my daughter-in-law. She said, my daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young woman you were with, is he not our relatives? Ah, uh, she knows the scripture enough to know that God has got a plan, not just for the single, but God has a plan for the widows as well, you know? So she set in motion that plan called Go Well, okay? And she thinks that, you know, there is this man called Boaz and his relatives, and probably he is the answer for you to end your singlehood, your widowhood. And God has a plan for my dead husband, Elimelech, also your dead husband, Melon, as well as your brother-in-law, Chilion. Listen, from the book of Ruth, God revealed to us He is God to both the living and the dead. When I read the book of Revelation, there is this phrase that declares that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Somewhere in the book of Revelation, it says that He is both the God of the living and the dead. I never understood that. I mean, I always associate those who pass away, it's over. God is no longer interested in the affair, you know? But I was very surprised when I read the entire book of Ruth, only four chapters, over and over again, that even though Elimelech already passed away, even though Chilion and Malon already passed away, yet their name keep reappearing somewhere towards the end of chapter 3, chapter 4, you know? Wow! Our God remembers those people, our loved ones, that once upon, they walk on the surface of this earth, they love us, uh, they love God, and uh, they love God dearly. And their timing is as such that God has to take them back for whatever reason we don't know. But has God forgotten them? We may have forgotten them, our loved ones. But God will never forget them. God keenly pursues their welfare, their interests. Fantastic. We go to Western Cemetery often. Because of funeral service. Also, we have to conduct burial and all that, apart from cremation. Do you know that Penang First Assembly of God, a big percentage of the congregation that passed away, they occupied the uppermost street where you go by Youth Park. There is a road that, you know, 
Before you go into Chesterton on the left, there's another one that leads you to Youth Park. Why? Simple. When I first came back, that was this huge strip of land. Next, there's a fencing. Just open up. The government approved. So now that there's a pastor, so they are now in their seniors' year. They are ready, uh, I won't say to die, they are ready to just let God have His way. So we did a lot of burial there. Uh, my dad, you know, later on, my first mother in law, and all that, plus church member, a whole lot of them. Well, there's another section whereby it's filled with Penang First Congregation. Where? The entrance. As we come in, later on, they open up the entrance, the main part, and next to the river, that side. Plenty of what? Plenty of church members also, you know, they were buried there. So Penang First has got both the entrance as well as the back portion. That is from the main road. And you're telling me, Pastor, why are you saying all this? I got reason why I'm saying all this. Praise God, God provided a place for burial and all that. But over the years, we keep going back, we also discover initially, a uh, certain, you know, graveyard is being visited often. But then, eventually, we see that not so frequent, you know, except on maybe Mother's Day, also Day, and, and Christmas perhaps. But whatever it is, men may forget, or maybe they have moved to other states, or maybe they have moved to other countries. But our God will always remember. Amen? Our God remembers you. Our God also remembers yours. You know, those who gone home to be with the Lord. So the Lord actively pursued. Here you can see that being a mother-in-law, she takes keen interest in Ruth. And she says that, i tell you what, he is our relative. And this is what we ought to do. We will activate the plan of go well. Now let's look at the word go well. What's the meaning of go well? It means redeemer. So often we sing the word, we sing the song, my redeemer live, my redeemer live. What was that? You say, my redeemer live, my redeemer live. Do you know what they are singing? I know. We only scratch the surface. My redeemer live means he's alive. That's just about it. Isn't it so? Most of us, we have the thought that it's another name of Jesus. Jesus is alive. He's alive. And my Redeemer lives means He's alive. But it's not that if your Redeemer is alive, He intends to redeem you from sin. He intends to redeem you from bad luck. He intends to redeem you from misfortune. He intends to redeem you from sickness. He intends to redeem you from poverty. He intends to redeem you from a life of, you know, defeat. And transfer you, hallelujah, into his kingdom and so that his life and his light can flow through you and ultimately you will see his hand, that he has got an upper hand over all the misfortune that you are facing in life. God intends to use all the negative things that happen in your life to change you, transform you and so that he can prepare you for greater things to come. Let me hear a big amen. Come on. Amen. Now there's another verse. Ruth chapter 3, verse 18. Naomi is so confident as a mother-in-law. She puts steel, steel of faith, steel of hope, you know, steel of expectation. She spoke into the life of her daughter-in-law. Now, this is what she said. Then she said, sit still, my daughter. You know how the matter will turn out, for the man will not rest until he has concluded the matters this day. She is saying, Ruth, don't worry. I can see, I can sense, I can analyze for all that you have told me about, you know, who this man is. He is a very responsible man. The word go well. Let's look at redeemer. What does that mean? In the life of Ruth and Naomi, they were at the bottom of their life, you know. They were going through hard times. Okay, go well. How do you pronounce go well? G-O-E-L. I check it out with the Google. I thought, how do you pronounce the word go well? Go, 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 well, you know, it says go well. Okay, it's called go well. Redeemer. What's the meaning of redeemer? It's more than just the grave, it's empty and it's alive. In the Hebrews Bible, 
the uh, rabbinical traditions is a person who, as the nearest relatives of someone who is charged with the duty of restoring that person's rights and avenging wrongs done to him or her. That's the word redeemer. If Christ is your redeemer, that's what he wants to do in your life, in my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Next slide, please. Go well. The kinsman redeemer was responsible to safeguard the persons, the property, and the posterity of the family. Words from the root, go well, are used with variety of meaning in the Old Testament. But the fundamental idea is that of fulfilling one's obligation as a kinsman. Jesus is not only our Redeemer, He is also our kinsman. You must allow Him to have His way, you know, 100% in your life. The next slide, please. As we analyze slowly, clearly, what Boaz will do according to the Old Testament, okay, for Ruth and Naomi, the kinsman redeemer was responsible to buy a fellow Israelite out of slavery. Are you in the slavery of sin? Christ has got the power. Christ has got the power to set you free. I handed my handphone to one of my junior in my family. And then, this is what he said. Dad, if I were to go to that, you know, there is this soft pornography. I said, yeah, I'm an old man lah. Whatever soft pornography and all that, I'm not interested, you know? And even if I happen to just stumble across, I say, uh, I, I will not be affected because I'm a married man and, and, and I've got family and all that. Uh, that was what he was saying. Anyway, I passed the handphone and then later it was passed back to me. For whatever reason, I don't understand. There was one day, just one picture only. Uh, it got stuck in my mind. It got stuck in my mind. Like I become enslaved by the picture. It is not hardcore pornography. It's just a picture. But I don't know why the devil just used that to like, you know, like a fiery dart. Huh? It gets into my mind. It distracts me. It's not even pornography, but whatever. Maybe I can go a little bit deeper. And it's okay. Nowadays, it's not the pornography that sometimes gets stuck in your mind. It is the gay picture. You know what I'm talking about? You see two men, half naked. Nothing is seen. It's just that from the stomach up, they hug each other, they kiss and they kiss and they kiss. It can be the kind of picture. And it's not those belly, big fat men. It is those, wow, they come out from the gym, you know. And then, uh, so, how do I get that picture out? I pray a prayer. I say, remove that picture in my mind. I happens to just come across when I did the TikTok as well as I did the whatever search. I forgot about it. Two weeks later, I suddenly remember, hey, how come? It? I just don't remember that. Then I remember I prayed that prayer. Hallelujah. If you are facing whatever you are facing that enslaves you, Jesus is your Redeemer. Let me hear a big amen. Hallelujah. Okay, next, avenger of blood. He was responsible to be an avenger of blood to make sure that the murderer of a family answer to his crime. So I know that Satan is defeated in my life. Satan is defeated and he is under my feet because I have the blood of Jesus over me. Satan is defeated in your life, in my life, in the life of our family members because Christ is the avenger of blood. He has paid that price on the cross, shed his blood to save us. Okay, number three, buy back family land. God wants to bless every single one here so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. According to your faith, be it unto you. Trust me, I was without a physical home. According to your expectation, be it unto you. If you expect God to bless you with 800 square feet, let it be so. If you expect God to bless you with a 1,000 square feet condo or apartment, let it be so. If you expect God eventually will help you to change and you will get a single story landed, fine, let it be so. But if your expectation is a little bit more than that, God can honour you as well. So what I'm saying is, 
the land. Here you see God is interested in giving the land back. The land that was sold by Elimelech, you know, Malion and Chilion. God interested to give the land back. Land, if you transfer it. Somebody talked to me in the grab. Two days ago, I was coming back from KL because I attended departmental meeting, you know. And then we were talking, and this is what he said. Wow, land in Penang very expensive. Huh? I said, land in KL is equally expensive. Land in this what? Johor Bahru is equally expensive. Can you imagine God was interested to restore land, L-A-N-D, thousands of years ago to Ali Malak as well as to Malion and Chilion? So don't ever say that God is not interested to give you a piece of land, a piece of property, somewhere that you can call your own and you can live. When the land was restored to Ali Malak, the dead person, Naomi's husband, not only they got the land, they're able to put up the building, and at the same time, they're able to do the planting of the wheat and the barley. At the same time, they're able to do the harvesting. At the same time, they're able to convert their harvest into cash, into money. That's what we always talk about, right? Now. So God, truly, not only He's wise, He's faithful. He takes a keen interest in everyone's life. That's why the name Emily Mene was printed there. Uh, Malion, Chilion, Printed there. Do you know how they look like? We don't know. Do you know how they look like? No idea. What I gave you, Ruth's picture as well as Naomi's picture, is just basically animated. You know, that's the best I could get. But do you know how they look like? You don't know. But God knows how they look like. And even thousands of years ago, God was interested in the affair of His people. Oh, come on, I tell you, God is interested in you, in me, in everyone. Every one of us, we're in Christ Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand. The fourth one, carry on the family's name. That means they will never, ever be forgotten. The name called Ali Malak. Because God is going to give this family a child to carry on the surname Ali Malak, together with Malion and Chilion. God is interested in your plight. God is interested also in your future. Amen. Praise God. Okay? So after looking at Go Well, so this is what Naomi spoke to Ruth. He says, look, this man, he's our redeemer as well as our family. And not any single man, you know, not just any good-looking single man. Oh, very handsome, uh, very macho, very manly. Uh, I will choose him to be my redeemer. No, God has already prepared. It has to be related. How are you related to Jesus? Through the precious blood of Jesus. You are born again. You are a child of God. So out of that incident in chapter 4, only two men. And the surprise thing is, Boaz is number two. There is still one more man. So in chapter 4, Boaz says, I tell you what, I should not surpass or undercut. I will go straight because that will make our marriage not legalized according to the Old Testament law. I will talk to this person first. So, this is what Boaz said. Look, you are the next of kin. I'm number two. Why don't you take Naomi's daughter-in-law to become your wife so that you can help to perpetuate the name Elimelech together with your property and so on and so forth. And he said, yes, yes, why not? Yes. Then Boaz reminded him, because this guy must have very vague idea about what it means by redeemer. That's why I say Boaz is a man of substance. Which man wouldn't want to get another beautiful wife as a second wife? Then Boaz said, right, okay, go ahead. You can take Ruth to be your wife. But there are obligations. You have to carry on the name of Elimelech, you know, the newborn child with Ruth, as well as you have to restore back the land which is owned by an Ali Malak to his widow called Naomi. Oh, if that's the case, I wouldn't. I don't mind get the girl, but I don't want to get involved in the affair because that would jeopardize my own possessions because my children, they're all grown up. You know, I've already divided the land and all that. And with the new additions, that means I have to redo everything. And my children may, may be very upset. And now the reality comes in. Not willing to sacrifice, not willing to go extra miles, not willing to do what God said in His Word. So with that, they settle it at the gate. In the Old Testament, it is like you gather 10 elders together and you settle it. And once you agree, you take your slippers, that token of like this, seal it. 
This very action sealed it. Now, I want to conclude by saying this. Eh? So many of us, we have the idea that I've got to do it my way to get a husband. I've got to do it, you know, uh, my way to get a wife. That urge to want to get married uh, as a Christian is normal. Because God created you and that the Bible tells us that there will come a time whereby you're of age and you want to get married, whether to get a husband or to get a wife. The Bible says that it is not good for a man to be alone. You know, it is God who created you, put you in that position when you're ready, you're looking for a wife or husband. But how do you go about? Hey, so many of us, we have the idea, if I were to do it, Bible will never get a wife. I will never get a good husband. I will never get a good wife. You know, I don't see there's a possibility. And the result is, we do it our way. What will happen when you do it your way? Look at Ahab. The Bible says he's a king. But he married the wife of his choice. He didn't want to go by God's way. And the wife of his choice, the Bible tells us what? Ahab. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to the wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Who is Jezebel? An idol worshiper. Okay? One that believed in all the different, different gods and all that. If you choose a non believer to be your wife, then you get ready because when the honeymoon period is over, she's going to introduce all her fear all her belief, all her do and don'ts and all that, not just to you, but to your children as well. This verse summarizes all. You know, that it is Jezebel who stirred him up to turn away from God and to walk in the way of wickedness. He's a king. There's another king, Solomon. Let's look at that verse. The Bible says that he has got how many wives? 700 wives and then 300 concubines. Being someone who is very solid, you know how solid is Solomon? Spiritually, he gave us the book of Proverbs. At the same time, you know, the Bible says that every king in the Old Testament, because they are so well looked after, they divide their populations into 12 sections. So each one look after them for one month, and each one will bring the best, best food, best wine, best, you name it. After that, rotate by another group for the next month. So it's like you have got 11 months to recuperate and to collect your resource before you meet your king again. So he was well looked after. And he became so smart, not only in academic, in spiritual matters, but he became a very shrewd businessman. He sell the best horse. He trade with Egypt. He make lots of money. Did you read in the Bible? It's in your Bible. Really, man, pastor, got, like that, got something like that, man? Exactly. He breed the best horse. He sell it to Egypt. Make money. It's like he sells Mercedes, Volvo, BMW, Audi, all this high end, and he make lots of money. That's not what God is against him. No, nothing of that. You know, God has created him to be so smart. But the thing is, the thing that turned him away, it is, for it was so when Solomon was old that his wife turned his heart other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God and was the heart of his, not like the father David. So important is look for your life partner in God's way. How do we look for life partner in God's way? Look, Abraham, his desire was, I want to make sure my son will not marry a foreigner. So Abraham sent his servant to go and look for a wife from his own relatives. When Abraham was old, well advanced in age, the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. Next, verse 2. And so Abraham said to the older servants of his house, and who rule over all that he had, please put your hands under my tie. And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Now, before I go into verse 4, before I go into the verse 4, when we were young, we never bothered to figure out what is called mother tongue. 
You know what is mother tongue? Mother tongue is mother tongue. Most of us now we discover we speak only our mother tongue. If you are Cantonese, your mother is a Teochew. Most likely you don't speak Cantonese, you speak what? Teochew. Mother tongue. Am I right? So in Israel, in the book of this uh, Ezra, he put a stop to all these foreign women and he, he expect all the Israelites, they have repented, they are experiencing revival, to put away their wives because they taught their children with foreign tongues, speaking only non-Hebrews, but any other languages. And that's not right. That time, you don't have to understand Hebrew. You will not understand the scripture. You will not be able to go to the temple to do the worship in spirit and truth. And in detail, mother tongue. So if you're looking for a wife, make sure she has got, you know, the mother tongue is according to the scripture. One that know God, speak about God, love God, put God, honor God first. Because the word mother tongue in a secular sense means the influence of a mother upon the children. That's how great it is. Just the simple word mother tongue. Look at verse 4. So Abraham said, don't, don't ever get anyone from here, but rather go back to my country and take a wife for my son Isaac. Listen to what the servant did. Let's just look carefully. Genesis verse 12. Then he prayed. Away from his master, Abraham, this servant faithfully, dutifully prayed to God. He says, oh God, bring that lady. You, you and I, we know the story. Rebecca appeared. And Rebecca was willing to marry to Isaac. And that's where they produce, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel through Jacob, of course, okay? So the person that we want to marry to is very, very important. Can I have the picture of ultimately Boaz took Ruth to be his wife? Yeah, they got married, chapter 4. Now we want to look at the life of Naomi in conclusion as a grandmother, Okay? Chapter 4, verse 14 to verse 17. Okay. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Also the neighbor women gave him a name saying, this is a son born to Naomi. Of course, it's Ruth who gave birth. But remember, go well, okay? Boaz and Ruth are supposed to bring forth a child that become, carry on the name of Elimelech. So here it says that also their neighbor women gave him a name saying, this is the son born to Naomi and they call him Obed. And it's connected to what God's plan he has for the whole nation of Israel. He is the father of Jess and Jess is the father of what? David. I would like another picture. I'm going to conclude. God is interested in your life through the up and the down. We look at Naomi her name means pleasant, gentle. But she was a wonderful mother, wonderful wife, but she has gone through the tragedy of losing her husband, losing her two sons, and became a widow. And later on, her daughter in also became a widow. So three widows actually were together. But did God abandon them? It appeared to be women. What do they have power during those times? What kind of a standing do they have? Nothing. You know, they are like treated like a victim, but God was the redeemer. Don't ever look down, despise widows, okay? God was their redeemer. Boaz has been very, 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 very humble, wise, faithful, okay? Haven't got a wife, but God has got a plan. And when God bring Ruth to come along, everything just gelled in together. And it became the purpose whereby David was born through that line. Your life will not go wasted. Whatever that you're going through, commit to the hands of God and God will lead you, guide you step by step and it will fit into His perfect divine plan. Shall we stand? Amen. Shall we stand? Father, I want to commit this Mother's Day, Lord, into your hand. The multitudes here, all the sisters, whether they are a young girl 
or whether they are a young wife, or whether they are married, or whether they are mother-in-law in our midst in their senior years. Lord, you're interested in their affair, in their daily living. You're so interested in the life of the men in our midst here. You want to develop substance within them. But all in all, Lord, you're interested in every one of us, including our loved ones that have passed on. And Lord, you want to work out your plan so that your name will be magnified, your people will be edified and be blessed. Sometimes, Father, we Christians, when we speak in terms of being blessing, it's so vague. It's as though like it is a jargon. God bless you. But in the case of Ruth and Naomi, Lord, the Redeemer not only restore, hallelujah, their fortune, but the Redeemer also give them a bright prospect. They end up to become the grandparents of King David. Lord, we don't know what is ahead of us. Sometimes the things that we go through is like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But help us, Lord, to learn from Naomi. Help us to learn from Ruth. Help us to learn from Boaz. Lord, just these three main characters is enough to tell us that you are our Redeemer. Hallelujah in every aspect. Lift up your hand and I want you to just acknowledge God on this Mother's Day as your Redeemer. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabawa Ushuba Karaba. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Christ is your Redeemer, church. Christ is your Redeemer. Sisters, Christ is your Redeemer. Mother, Christ is your Redeemer. Mother in law, Christ is your Redeemer. Grandmother, Christ is your Redeemer. Brother, Amen. Christ is your Redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen. Boaz started very late. Got married maybe after the age of 40 over. He waited for the right time. And when the right person came along, the Redeemer brought into his life Ruth and never knew that they became the great-grandparents of King David. Oh, God sees everything from the beginning to the end. All things truly work out good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. As we celebrate Mother's Day, it is not just another event, but recognizing that God is the one that, you know, created mother. God is the one that also caused every one of us. We are born because of our mother. Amen. The day when we were born into this world, God has got a plan, God has got a purpose. Whatever tough time, bad time we go through, ultimately, amen, He has got a plan that able to magnify His name and we will be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our destiny is in His hand. Let's trust Him. Let's believe in Him. Let's walk according to His word, His promises. Let's allow His Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us. Lift up your hand. Oh, Rabba, wa shutiri Rabba, that's right confess the book of Ruth over your life there is light at the end of the tunnel church our God specialized in turning the mess of your life into his message our redeemer he specializes able to turn your trial into trophies Church, the Redeemer able to turn all your scars in life, hurtful words, words that cut you in thousand and one pieces, words that put you down, words that constantly haunt you and say that you're no good, you're nobody, you're lousy, you know, and all that. God is able to turn those scars. He will not take away the scars, but He will be able to turn those scars into stars. If you would let him, how? Forgetting those things that lies behind. Press onwards towards the mark of the high calling. And just do as what the Lord says. Rejoice evermore in Thessalonians. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Sounds so simple. Sounds so foolish. Sounds so as though like we don't have to use our brain. No. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, as we lift our hand, we acknowledge you on this Mother's Day. We thank you for this full message in chapter 4. Yes, Christ is our Redeemer. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ redeemed us from poverty. Christ redeemed us from sicknesses. 
Christ redeemed us from the bondage, hallelujah, and from the power authority of sin. And we have been redeemed, hallelujah, from the hands of the enemy. And Lord, you have in exchange blessed us with life, life more abundantly. The just shall live by faith, hallelujah, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Hallelujah. We will walk in that full liberty. We have got love, joy, peace. Hallelujah. At the same time, we have got this assurance that my God shall supply all my needs. You just have to trust God step by step. The situation for Ruth, it wasn't turned around in 12 hours, 24 hours, but it over a span of one year, one and a half years, two years. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. The book of Hebrews says that faith and patience inherit the promises of God. Let's not belong to the present generations that I want it, I don't want it now. Instant gratification. Let us learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we thank you for all the mothers, the grandmothers, the stepmothers, as well as Lord, uh, uh, the mother-in-law and the Godma and every single one. We ask, Lord, that your precious blood cover every one of us here as well. Lord, as we go from here, help us to ponder everything from the book of Ruth, especially chapter 4. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for the life of Ruth. Thank you for the life of Naomi. Thank you for the life of Boaz. We want to thank you for the life of Elimelech, Chilion, and Malon. Hallelujah. Amen. Even the life of Opal, the the other daughter-in-law, taught us one thing. When we turn ourselves away from the Word of God, from God Himself, we will end up in oblivion and we become nothingness purposeless and the scripture never mentioned about her again except in chapter 1 but we who hold on to the hand of Jesus thank you our future is as bright as the promises of God to God be the glory give the Lord a hand a blessed Mother's Day to everyone Amen God bless you